Welcome back to the Code Search channel. In this video, I want to talk about one of the applications of deep neural networks in image processing, and that is colorization of black and white images. The neural network that we are going to use is from this paper. Let's see some outputs from this model. Let's have a look at the structure of this network. The input to this network is the lightness channel from the lab color space. In this structure, we have COM that is consisted of two or three repeated convolutions with ReLU activation and followed by a batch norm layer. Finally, this network predicts two other channels that are A and B. As mentioned in this article, the goal of this network is not to produce the actual color of objects, but a color that is believable to a human observer. Training data for such a network can easily be obtained. You just need to separate the L channel as input and A and B channels for evaluation. This article has trained the network using the ImageNet dataset. Another key factor in this design is the loss function. Some studies use some standard regression losses to minimize the Euclidean distance between the grand truth color and the predicted one. In this way, if the solution to the set of colors become non-convex, the network generates unrealistic colors. But this paper allowed several possible colors for an object. For example, an apple can be red green or yellow. In other words, color prediction is multimodal, therefore the problem is multinomial classification and the paper used multinomial cross-entropy loss. It quantized the A and B output space into 313 beans and the networks maps the input to a probability distribution over possible colors for each pixel. For generating the color distribution, this paper used temperature in the softmax function. Heating a distribution, or in other words, a high value for the temperature, makes the distribution values get closer together, and the distribution becomes uniform. It is similar to when we heat a metal object to reduce its hardness. A lower value for T results in a more peaked distribution, and the model becomes more confident. This paper evaluated several values for the temperature and picked a value that leads to better results. And for the output, the model takes the mean over the distribution. This process is done by using bin cluster centers from the probabilities of 313 quantized color blocks from the ImageNet dataset and generating one by one kernels and doing the convolution over the feature maps. The predicted channels are then added to the lightness and the final image is formed. Another principal change in this structure is stressing rare colors. If you look at the old pictures of the ImageNet dataset, we see a concentration of colors in a limited range with low A and B values. This is because most parts of images consist of backgrounds, such as clouds and mountains. Without weight rebalancing of rare colors, these low-value colors dominate the loss function and we have desaturated colors in the output. For evaluation, the paper authors showed the output images along with real images to human observers and asked them to identify fake images. In this experiment, participants were fooled on 32% of the trials. Let's implement this network using Python. First, I import NumPy and OpenCV packages. Next, I load the train network using OpenCV. The first input is the proto.txt file that defines the structure of our model. As you can see, layers are defined along with their parameters. For example, we have 224 by 224 input. 
The first convolution has 64 outputs with a kernel size of 3 and padding of 1. This convolution is followed by a ReLU activation. In some parts, we also have batch norm 2. Finally, in the last layers, we have a convolution with 313 feature maps. Then we scale the outputs because of the temperature. Then we use softmax and generate the distribution of colors for two A and B color space. The second input is the train weights. Next, I should load the center beans of 313 quantized A and B color space from the ImageNet dataset. It will be used to generate the colors. I load the temperature value that is mentioned in the paper for a scaling before the softmax layer. I can get the name of the model layers using model get layer names. And I can track the input output shapes using get layer shapes and pass the input shape as an argument. As you can see in the last layer, we have 2 by 56 by 56, that is the A and B channel. Now I load several images using OpenCV. I rescale the images to values between 0 and 1. I convert them to lab color space and extract the lightness channel. Now I should pre-process the images so that I can pass them to the network. I should resize them to the required height and width and subtract the mean from the values. I can perform these steps manually or use blob from image from the OpenCV. With this command, we can set the output resolution, rescale the image, define the mean for subtraction, and swap RB channels. The output is a four dimensional image in which the first dimension specifies the number of instances and the others define the image shape. I pass the image to the network using the model forward. As I have shown earlier, the output shape is 1 by 2 by 56 by 56. Now I should resize the image to the original one, change the axis order and merge the L channel to the AB channel. I limit the values greater than 1 to 1 and lower than 0 to 0 and rescale the values. For demonstration, I stack the colored image and the original one. So that's it for the today's video, I hope you find this video useful.